Today I'd like to finish off the theme we were talking about in the last video about myocardial oxygen supply and go on the other side and talk about myocardial oxygen demand and the factors that go into figuring that out. There are three main factors I'd like to talk about today. Number one is the heart rate. This is probably the easiest to, to understand. As we saw in the video about oxygen supply, the heart rate an increased heart rate serves to decrease the myocardial oxygen supply by decreasing the diastolic filling time. Well, it works in a similar way to decrease the oxygen, sorry, to increase the oxygen demand. If you have an increased heart rate equals an increased number of beats, and each beat requires energy. So you're going to need more energy and therefore more oxygen because we know that oxygen is required to produce the energy that results in the heart contracting. So a higher heart rate equals increased myocardial oxygen demand. I think that's fairly easy to understand. The second factor is wall stress, which is related to a principle called the law of Laplace. This is often hard to understand and somewhat confusing, but you can boil it down to essentially saying that the wall stress is the work that the heart has to do to contract. Work heart does. And there are several factors that make this work harder or, or easier. And that's the wall stress. So the tension or wall stress is related to the pressure or directly proportional to the pressure and the radius of the ventricle itself and inversely proportional to the thickness of that wall. I like to think of it by in simplistic terms by looking at a circle. So if the pressure is higher inside the circle, you're going to have to do more work or the wall is going to have to work harder to squeeze that ventricle and squeeze that blood out. That's the pressure. So if there's increased pressure in here, it's going to be exerting more pressure on that wall. That wall is going to have to squeeze harder, work harder to squeeze that blood out. <clears throat> the wall thickness, so if we've got a thin circle here and a thicker circle here, the work per unit thickness in the thick walled ventricle is actually going to be less than the work per unit thickness in a thin walled ventricle. And that's so that's essentially saying that the same amount of tension or stress is being um, dissipated over a greater thickness of wall. This one can go either way because you could also say that the net oxygen demand or oxygen consumption is going to be higher in here because there's more muscle. So this one can sometimes be a bit of a wash, but by the definition of the law of Laplace, a thicker walled ventricle is going to have less wall stress, wall stress per unit thickness. The third factor of the law of Laplace is the radius of the ventricle. Now this is related to the preload, and that's essentially saying that the bigger this circle is, or the greater the volume, the, the more work it's going to take to squeeze that volume back to the original size. So if you had a ventricle that was filled this much versus one that was filled this much, in order to get back to this original size, it's going to take less work in this one and more work in this one. So the wall stress and thus the myocardial oxygen demand is going to be higher, so increased O2 demand. The third factor is contractility. Essentially is a measure of the force of contraction. Measures force of contraction. Independent of the preload and afterload and all these other factors. It's essentially just how strong is that muscle contracting. And you can imagine that if the contractility is increased, if the muscle is contracting stronger, then you've got an increased oxygen demand. So increased contractility equals increased oxygen demand. And that works with our circle analogy as well. If that circle is going to be squeezing harder, it's going to require more oxygen. So those are the three main factors or set of factors that go into determining myocardial oxygen demand.